Afternoon all, the British Championship is going to start again soon, uh, this, this round is going to be exciting. Uh, Adams, I think he's going to be playing against Garwin Jones. Now this is a previous round where Garwin Jones was playing against Richard Bates. Um, <laughs> please, no jokes about <laughs> Bates, he's a master now. No jokes beyond that, okay? Alright, it's not funny. So, E4. <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay, so E4, Ed uh, Bates so, plays C5. Um, okay. <clears throat> so now, okay, Garwin uh, plays actually D3. So, you wouldn't think this is going to be an exceptionally exciting game because of this start D3. I mean, who would play D3 against the Sicilian? What is this D3? Okay, may, maybe Petrosian, you know, maybe maybe later, you know, this this sort of thing, uh, or maybe even um, maybe even more adventurous knight E2, and then F4, F5 later. Okay, so okay, it's the start of a potentially closed Sicilian, uh, but there's actually an immediate F4, so the knight's not blocking in the F pawn at all. So we have a kind of reverse classical. Dutch defence, in effect, because in in the classical Dutch defence, you know, later, you know, if it was black, you know, it'd be playing like this. Thematic, you know, it's black. You'll play that if you're in the Dutch defence, and you know, potentially getting over here, uh, potentially using moves like this. You know, if it, if it was like a reverse Dutch classical, you might be doing that sort of stuff. So, G6 from Bates. Now Knight F3, and um, off the bishop g7, bishop e2. Okay, so good so far. No one needs to improvise on the position. d6. So black's really, uh, as many players would do, just highlight you know the dark squares, keep a central grip on d4 in particular. Everything all good so far. A lot of us would play black at the moment. White simply castles. Now another logical move. A uh, little bit controversial, I suppose, wanting to give up the two bishops, the bishop pair. But, you know, it's all about d4 control usually, isn't it? So being able to play bishop f3 to undermine white's control of d4. Then maybe, you know, later, um, either the knight comes to f6 or later just like this. And then and then later, once you've got more dark square influence, you know, after casting, uh, maybe, you know, this sort of plan, b4, would also undermine d4 if needed. So black's play at the moment seems fairly uh, logical, straightforward, but white is playing this reverse Dutch, you know, classical strategy, which is quite brutal, quite caveman-like. Uh, it's quite nifty as well. Not only the niftiness of queen e1 to h4, but queen e1 affords the nifty retreat bishop d1 if needed to protect c2, which could always be annoying because of knight b4s. Uh, you know, c2 is often vulnerable. But um, here, uh, black goes a bit wild after material. Okay. Bates plays the move c4. Right. c4. What on earth is c4? Okay, it's a quick undermining, of course, of the pawn chain at the exploitable base of the chain, or is it? Um, the thing is, it is also a pawn sack, and the idea is revealed fairly quickly. It's to win a pawn back with check, and now this b2 pawn. The problem is, you know, these are still spectator pieces, aren't they? This king's still in the center. If we look at the fundamental principle of the art of war, what is the fundamental principle about going on the attack? Put yourself beyond defeat before going on to the attack. Now, if I was going to do another five tips video of tips that I missed from the first five tips, I think I'm going to put that you know, as, as an element of prophylaxis, because that really is about prophylaxis, when you put yourself beyond defeat. Here, black is going on the attack, trying to seize uh, material, trying to you know damage the pawn structure. Noble intention there. If black can castle, get into safety, the pawn structure is a bit damaged. There is double pawns here. This is fragmented. Black would have dark, good dark square control. He still hasn't given up the bishop pair. 
And you know, winning B2 would also further fragment white's pawn structure if we look at it. Because if you remove the B2 pawn, you get quite a big dicing of white's pawn structure. Okay, but factor in the dynamics. Chess isn't that simple. Put in the dynamics now. What is going on here? Should you attack, you know, before putting yourself beyond the feet? Well, we're going to find out. So King H1. Black regains the pawn now. Bishop takes B2. So what does go in play here? Okay, he's faced with material loss. No doubt about it. He has to take first. And now he calmly plays knight c3. So he's offering, of course, c2. Of course, you know, his pawn structure is fragmented. But unfortunately, that doesn't win the game f for black immediately, just on pawn structure. Oh, you know, your pawn structure is so bad, you're going to have to resign here. No. A lot of chess is about king safety and other dynamic things. King safety, not the king, king safety. So what does black play here? He further plays on the dark squares in effect, but he's giving white now a potentially powerful light square bishop. When he plays bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, look at this bishop, potentially it can be liberated with e5. That's something to note. Also this rook b1 can potentially hit b7, something else to note. So black, you know, he's still, he's got his king in the center. These pieces are not developed. This is a bit shocking actually, I don't know what happened to Richard that day, but it seems, it seems in a lot of games recently, between people of like 200 points higher, that their lower rated opponents seem to be freaked out. You know, just not playing their normal game, totally freaked out. And I think that's the case here. Because would he normally, would Richard really normally play like this? You know, is he intending on casting queenside with a semi on B file? Probably not, but kingside, with this tempo gain available on the queen, is, is looking um, a bit difficult as well. So queen b4, okay, at least he's gonna see c4 if rook b1. So rook b1, he sees his c4. But black really is violating this fundamental art of war principle. Okay, and now he's, he's starting to pay the price, because now rook takes b7. So materially, <clears throat> What is the pawn situation? Four, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Equal on pawns. Dynamically, these pieces are not yet developed. The king's still stranded in the center. And now a further attacking move from black. Knight d4. So white now goes freely on the attack. With knight d5 simply threatening knight c7, winning entire rook. So knight f6 is now no longer in question, it's impossible to play knight f6 now. Richard has to defend c7. So rook c8. And now, white simply plays rook takes a7, knowing that again knight f6 is not unpalatable because it's like rook takes e7, potentially. Or knight takes e7, maybe. So black plays knight takes c2. So he's playing actually without knight and rook in this game. And this knight takes c2 is of course attacking the queen. The queen has a very useful square to go to. It has to hold on to the f1 rook though, because Richard is attacking f1. So queen b1. Okay, queen b1. Now there is, with this move, a few threats emerging like rook c1 to pin nastily which might imply knight e3 later on or there's alternatively there's knight b6 as a threat forking queen and rook and alternatively again there's queen b7 as a threat really tying down knight f6 so then queen e7 will be made but no the queen is on f1 this queen cannot move yet to b7 in this position so let's see the real exploitable threats you know include potentially knight b6 and maybe rook c1 is, is a fairly annoying pin as well. Okay, queen c5 is played, so Richard hits back on this rook. It's now moved or protected, so it's actually protected with queen b7. Now remember, that move means, you know, the white queen's not tied down to protecting f1, so it's now free to enter the fray on b7. Queen 
c6 really wants to get the queens off not minding potentially horrible continuation now takes and rook a8 to force king d7 with this nasty pin but maybe black could fight on another day there who knows or maybe that is lost as well actually uh, but white finds a neat way to conclude this game actually he plays check first which it doesn't want to give up the exchange particularly with rook c7 so um king d7 and now a surprising move i wonder if you guys can spot it how would how would you proceed here the attack a slightly surprising move because your first thoughts might you know want to keep as much tension as possible so i'll give you 10 seconds it's it's not not a major you know magical move or anything it's quite straightforward so 10 seconds starting from now okay you don't need the queen whoops you don't need the queen queen takes c6 check king takes and now 10 seconds here okay e5 check and look the bishop and knight are on d5 so there's no d5 you know without taking king b6 and now can you spot the winning continuation if I give you 20 seconds I hope you can spot it it's, it's nice so 20 seconds starting from now okay just give up the rook check beautiful king takes and now I hope you found it mate 23 move mate so if there's any game in the British which has demonstrates this idea of going beyond defeat before going on attack I think this game is it this game in round six let's have a look at that again from a seemingly cautious start to showing the colors of the feathers which is basically a reverse Dutch classical quite aggressive in its own right the idea behind it Bishop seemingly you know not as aggressive as on on g2 but this is cost you know this costs light square weaknesses it costs time putting on b bishop on e2 is fast fast developing you know to get get cancelled etc okay black's got the d4 idea but now goes into a very committal path now so not wanting i suppose to be faced with uh queen h4 and stuff like you know maybe f5 you know c3 bishop g5 later potential you know rook lifts if black's not careful this is my kind of attacking setup i love it that's why so this is this is a viable system against the sicilian defense we're witnessing here just play it as a reverse dutch classical c4 committal from black going on to the attack king still in the center these two pieces we're, we're having an instructive game here in an instructive game you need need really one side to make a disastrous kind of strategy or or blunder here i think it's a disastrous strategy blacks on fragmenting the pawn structure in principle very very good you know diced pawn structure winning material in principle good in a particular position bad because King's still stuck in the center. Although, you know, black is tying down the queen at the moment. That stops being the case very shortly. After this move, queen c5. The queen's now able to come into black's position. Queen b7. And the surprise here is coming up in this position. Maybe Richard assumes it was going to be fairly safe if the queens came off wasn't the case at all the remaining pieces did a very nice final execution offering the rook here rook b1 then rook b7 elegance economy these pieces still stuck at home let that be a warning to you guys develop your pieces first before going on to the attack it all is written in the art of war comments or questions on youtube thanks very much